Matai Akaula, you have been appointed the new director of the Media Industry Development Authority in Fiji. What do you hope to achieve in this new job? Well, to put up a new media standard in Fiji that will kind of become a beacon for many in the region where our communities will be better uh, appreciate and understand that media must be a development partner rather than a bystander in any country. So, you know, we, we want to see media playing a major role in moving uh, Fiji forward. And what role is that? Well, um, you know, to to, uh, to be partners with, with uh, because it's the fourth estate, and, and a lot of times we we are kind of uh, put on, on the wayside, you know, when uh, developments happen, um, we are uh, sort of the last or oh, um, oh, kind of forgotten, uh, so to speak, you know, and uh, most of the developments that happen, uh, uh, organizations come in with, with uh, um, their press releases maybe towards the end of the day rather than um, informing us beforehand how things are progressing, whether it be government or the private sector or the judiciary. Uh, they should also realize that uh, media plays a key role being the fourth estate in the country. So what expectations do you have for your new job? Well, um, I expect um, a lot of exciting challenges, uh, Daniel. Uh, we have a new constitution in place and we will try uh, to see how it could be workable in terms of uh, applying structures uh, or putting uh, structures in place that uh, connects us from the bottom up, uh, so to speak, you know, uh, 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 we, we would like to see that uh, the, uh, the Constitution is in place. We have uh, uh, the freedom of, of media enshrined in the Constitution. Now, how does it filter right down to our normal working journalists? So we, we have to put in place structures that, you know, that it, it works uh, both ways. Mm. And can you tell me a bit more about that? How will these uh, structures work? Well, you know, we were part of, uh, uh, say, uh, organizations that wrote in uh, during the uh, uh, submissions uh, for the Constitution. Uh, and we had, um, uh, in our submissions, uh, said that we'd want to see the freedom of media uh, in the Constitution. Now that it's in there, uh, we have to see how that is translated to the realities on the ground, how it works for us. So it is so vital that there, is, uh, there be a connection in, the, in terms of that. You have been the manager of the Pacific Islands News Association, PINA, for some time now. Why did you decide to leave your position there to take up this new position instead? Well, um, it, it is uh, time for a change um, uh, and for a new challenge, uh, Daniel. Uh, the current PINA is financially sound, although it is not donor-funded. PINA is independent and sustainable as, as we speak. So um, uh, probably one of the few organizations that survives on its own in the Pacific region. Uh, looking at uh, the PINA structure at the moment, you know, whilst we are pushing for uh, strengthening of national associations, uh, we see that there's a disconnect. And by taking up this position in media authority, it's to strengthen uh, the media in Fiji and see how it connects to the regional components or the strategies that PINA has. What do you bring from PINA that can be of value to the media authority? Well, uh, 32 years of, of media experience, uh, having worked in print, radio and television um, here in Fiji, uh, the region and beyond. Um, I'm probably one of uh, the few remaining journalists in Fiji that have an unbroken record working in the media all these years. You know, I've worked in, in the regional media over six years now and having served as a council member for two terms with the International Freedom of, of Expression network IFEX. So with my connections on the international, regional and national front, uh, I believe there's so much that I can bring into the media authority that will hopefully put in place a new 
uh, uh, set up that uh, could be like a beacon, uh, not only in Fiji, but uh, in the region as well. Mm. Uh, many have been critical about the lack of media freedom in Fiji. Reporters Without Borders said in its latest report there are noticeable problems, uh, whereas Freedom House in its 2012 report said there is a large degree of self-censorship among journalists in Fiji because of the Media Industry Development Decree that was introduced in 2010. What do you say to those who are critical about media freedom in Fiji? Well, no one is perfect. No, no country is perfect for that matter, uh, Daniel, and uh, you cannot satisfy everyone. Um, you know, when when I say that, I don't believe we should be uh, dictated to by various organizations who only highlight problems and haven't had their hands dirty to do something positive uh, for countries like Fiji that, that's wanting to progress uh, further. So for homegrown problems, we have to look for homegrown solutions. Like we always say in Tina, uh, we are doing it differently, but we are not wrong. I've, uh, like I said, I've been a member... Uh, council member of IFEX and, um, you know, Reporters Without Borders, uh, Freedom House are also members of IFEX. And many of the data or findings of such organizations uh, as uh, Reporters Without Borders, Freedom House and the likes are questionable. There are various motives in play here and, and some do what they do uh, to stay viable and continue to, to get donor funding. So the critics will always be there. But uh, let me tell you, Fiji has just moved on, and um, we're exploring new frontiers. We've got a new constitution, and uh, we, we've got nothing to lose. It's, it's putting in place new things uh, for our future generations here in Fiji. It's not been more than just over a month now since uh, Reverend Akula Yabaki was sentenced to three months imprisonment suspended for one year after publishing a critical article on Fiji's judiciary in the newsletter of the Citizens' Constitutional Forum. Uh, in your view, Matai, how does a recent case like this fit into a country that wants to promote freedom of speech? Well, um, you know, I do not wish to be drawn into this issue about uh, uh, Reverend Yabaki. Uh, but to say that freedom of expression and media freedom are entirely two different uh, things in nature and approach. So I'd rather stick to media freedom because there are ethical matters to consider, you know. So there are boundaries, there are guidelines when, when we, we are working under uh, media freedom. But when you um, uh, talk about uh, freedom of expression, there's a, it's an entirely... Uh, bigger uh, frontier, you know, and um, I, I don't see, you know, what sort of guidelines do you have for that. But uh, I'd, I'd kind of be more safe working with media free freedom because we've got ethics. Uh, there are standards, and uh, if we abide by those, we shouldn't have problems when it comes to media freedom. So those are two things, you know, and uh, we could either be advocates uh, which deals with uh, freedom of expression, or we are journalists dealing with media freedom. Mm. Uh, the Development Authority will, as I understand it, have the power to enforce the media decree. How will you enforce the decree? Well, uh, that would be the last resort. However, since the coming into force of the, the media decree in 2010, people have focused so much on the power of the authority and the penalties and hardly touched on uh, what I, I believe is critical, the functions of the authority and, and how it intends to lift media standards. I'd rather focus on the positives than the negatives. So you must realize, um, you know, I've also been a member of the Fiji Media Council, and there are better ways of dealing with uh, various issues when it does arise, you know. So the decree um, has been there for three years now, and, and we have not enforced our powers, but proactively we've told our media colleagues to understand the decree and the code of ethics. So once they are clear with that, they shouldn't have any problems um, in terms of um, looking at the penalty. So we'd, we'd rather be proactively telling them, you know, understand your media code of ethics. It's in the decree. So should you abide by that, then you shouldn't have any problems uh, in, in that regard. 
Some critics say that the decree has still an effect, though, because it um, leads to self-censorship. Um, uh, what do you say to those critics? Well, like I said, you know, there's a difference. Um, uh, self-censorship, uh, it depends on how you look at it. But uh, I, I, I would say the code is there. If you abide by the code, and the code is not in the book, but it is in you. Once you understand it, it's in your system. You shouldn't have a problem. Mm. Uh, Fiji is in a democratic transition now with the elections coming up next year. How important is a large degree of media, free media in relation to the election campaign? Very important. And, and, and the media is free as we speak. They just need to apply their code of ethics, which is in the media decree, and they won't go wrong. You know, uh, just get the basics right and uh, you won't go wrong. One thing you must realize, this is uh, Fiji, so do not compare us with Australia or New Zealand, you know, Australia and New Zealand have also put up their media authorities in recent times. But the Australian and New Zealand media have not taken their governments to task in terms of those authorities. So every now and then the Australian and New Zealand media have about the media authority in Fiji instead of dealing with their own. So to me that it is, a, you know, uh, uh, I kind of look at it from a perspective why is it that the Australian New Zealand media would want to see what's happening with, with Fiji Media Authority instead of the New Zealand authority that was proposed by the New Zealand government, the authority in Australia that recently was, was put up by the Australian government as well. So, uh, you know, to me, uh, it, it's, it's really questionable where, where the Australian and New Zealand media are coming from. You know, you continue to look at the Fiji Media Authority instead of looking at your own backyard uh, yourself. So uh, that, that's, that's something that I see that in the last, uh, since the coup in 2006, uh, the New Zealand and Australian media have continued to try to dictate to us how we, we live our lives, you know, and um, that's why I'm saying homegrown solution, uh, problems can only be met by homegrown solutions. So for us, uh, the Fijian media, we need to come together and see, okay, what works for us? And how do we want to progress from here? So is there any particular um, comments you are referring to when, when you say that uh, Australians and New Zealanders have, have dictated uh, Fiji media? Well, you know, we, we continue to have this question about the media authority in Fiji, but have you guys questioned your own uh, media authorities that the New Zealand government had proposed? Likewise, the Australian government had proposed uh, a similar media authority like what's been established in Fiji. So I haven't seen much on that. So uh, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Mm. Uh, what areas would you identify as the most important areas where Fiji needs to improve on, uh, improve on regarding media standards and media freedom? Well, with the constitution in place and media freedom enshrined in, um, in this new constitution, I'd like to look at, uh, you know, the legal and regulatory systems, the quality of journalism, the, the plurality of, of news sources, management of media, uh, the institutes that support uh, journalists. So there are various uh, toolkits uh, for us to look at, uh, and, and, and PINA has a... MOU with the Association of Media Workers in the Caribbean, and we had uh, discussions on collaboration in terms of elections and the media and various cases, case studies on, on self-regulation. So, um, you know, as we speak, I already have uh, proposals for workshops on parliament and the media. Uh, likewise, social media as a tool for covering elections. So there's a whole lot of, of training that... Um, that we propose to undertake before elections because we haven't had a parliament in the last six, seven years. So you'll um, uh, understand that uh, most of our media people in the mainstream right now were not here when there was a parliament. So from the media authorities' perspective, there's a whole lot of training that's, uh, that needs to be undertaken. And um, I can take you back to the first military coup in 87. So, so for us, there's been a whole lot of things. There's been a whole, whole lot of uh, shiftings. We've seen various governments come and gone. So 
So from a media perspective, there is so much for us to do. So we'll try and take one step at a time. You know, we uh, we have um, uh, almost a year to put in place various uh, training uh, uh, workshops for uh, uh, journalists that are here who were not there when there was a parliament. So a whole lot of things to be done. Just carrying on a little bit from that, uh, Matai, I know that many journalists in Fiji uh, quit being journalists quite young and, and maybe go over to a, a PR role. Uh, do, do you hope that a journalist will stay longer in their jobs uh, in Fiji with uh, you in charge of the Development Authority? Uh, well, that's, that's a good question. Um, I hope so. You know, um, So one thing that we will be looking at uh, when I talk about standards, uh, we had uh, already uh, started uh, having discussions with the University of Fiji in terms of um, having some sort of uh, 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 career path for even experienced journalists that are, that are here without uh, degrees or diplomas. So there's a whole lot of work uh, um, uh, needed to be done. Likewise, we would uh, want to address issues of pay as well, you know, looking at the standard of of, of pay in the mainstream and uh, something that we've uh, seen in the recent past most of the journalism students that come out of uh, the universities are going to uh, to NGOs and uh, civil societies because uh, they get uh, better pays uh, the other thing that we are trying to, to encourage here is by getting them to stay uh, longer is to see that we have a safety net you know we are, we are building up to elections we, we are we need to be mindful of, of, of the recent past, of, of how the media is kind of blamed for a whole lot of things, so become scapegoats uh, for political parties. And uh, we've faced it in this last 20 uh, odd years uh, since the first military coup. So anything that goes wrong, um, the, the, the people to, uh, to blame is the media. But uh, that's something that we would want to change, you know, from the media authority to see that we have a safety net for, for journalists that are working in mainstream, and we want to see that their conditions uh, are improved. Likewise, you know, uh, we look at the professionalism of, of uh, journalists as well and, and, uh, and uh, further on. So uh, a whole lot of network, a whole lot of uh, things to be done, not only here in Fiji with uh, our universities. Uh, that's why we've been in touch with, uh, with uh, Auckland uh, uh, university as well uh, with um, people like Professor Robbie. So a whole lot of things to be to, to be uh, done and worked on uh, so that, um, you know, once we put the foundational principle in place, uh, it will go on for generations rather than just um, building up to just that, uh, the elections next September and that's it, you know. But this is uh, uh, for the future generations of media people in Fiji. The Media Industry Development Authority also seeks to build up the vernacular of the media in languages such as Hindi and Fijian instead of just relying on English. How will you promote Hindi and Fijian in your new position? Well, um, I don't have to do much uh, because this current government um, has already indicated or said that come next year um, the uh, Itauke and indo fijian languages become compulsory in schools from next year. So uh, the government's put that in place. Uh, we, we believe that will assist us in moving forward. Uh, the constitution has been um, uh, translated into uh, the Itauke and uh, the indo fijian languages. Um, for my part, from the media authority, I'd like to see the media decree as well uh, put into the Itauke and indo fijian languages. So then we will roll out a whole lot of programs to, to get more understanding in, in the role of the media in a country like Fiji. So it, 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 it's inclusive and uh, uh, we would want more people to understand because once they understand it will be better for our nation.